tried to cook it last yeah, year and I got it. Hi, everybody from home. Whoever's watching this video, you out there on the internet. Um, so just as a reminder, what did we talk about yesterday? We talked about this linear approximation formula, right? And again, just as a reminder, this is on your formula sheet. This is the bottom of your formula sheet that L of X is equal to F of A plus F prime of A times X minus A. And we, remember, we really derived that from the just the, the equation of the slope of the tangent line, or excuse me, the equation of the tangent line. And then, you know, F prime of X is your, excuse me, F prime of A is your slope. Uh, times x minus a, which is essentially x minus x1 in a point slope form, and then y minus y1 on the over si other side. We just added over f of a. So this is essentially just reducing or just shortcutting your, um, your equation of the tangent line formula. And again, this is called linear approximation. And what we do with linear approximation is just basically say, well, remember that if we zoom in and zoom in and zoom in on any curve, it starts to look more and more like a line. Exactly like a line? No, but starts to look more and more like a line. So what we can use is this linear approximation and then use that linear approximation to say, okay, if I get really, really close to it, you know, because again, sometimes it's not easy to tell what the value is going to be. Maybe the values around that, that certain point are undefined or maybe they're really hard to calculate. So it's, it's nice that we have this ability to create that linear approximation, which is a much more simple equation. Like, Honestly, if we took the square root of x plus 3 and then we took this equation, we would, we would all say that 1.75 plus 1 fourth x was a lot more simple than just the square root of x plus 3. So we can say that the linear approximation around that point gives us pretty close to those values uh, with, some, with just a little bit of error, right? With just a little bit of error. Uh, and then we started talking about differentials. Um, remember that, you know, honestly, if you think about the... Um, the notation that we have, and uh, these are actually the, the slides from last year. If you think about the notation that we have, um, you know, thinking from our linear approximation formula, starting one more step up, um, L of X is equal to F of A plus F prime of X times X minus A. If I solved that equation for F prime of X, and we said, okay, X minus A is kind of like delta X, and we subtracted that back over, L of X minus F of A, is, that's a kind of our delta Y, our difference in our Y values. So we have our difference in our X values and our difference in our Y values. And I changed difference in X to DX, and I divided that back over. We end up getting this DY over DX is really equal to F prime of X. This, that right there is our differential equation. DY is equal to F prime of DX. Right? dy is equal to f prime dx, and dy is your differential on y, and dx is your differential on x, and f prime is obviously your derivative, okay? And then we did this problem here where we said, okay, what if we go from 2 to 2.05, and then from 2 to 2.01, and we calculated the differential, and we said, okay, dy is equal to f prime of x dx, and we said, okay, dx is your differential on x, so 0.05, dy is your differential on y, which is what we're looking for. And we're saying, okay, dy is 0.7. And then we compared it to the actual delta y, and we got really close. Okay? And again, it all depends on your error tolerance. Like, how close do you want to be using your differential? Okay. Now, in this case, obviously, again, I'm restating what I said yesterday. Uh, in this case, we can pretty easily calculate what delta y would be from 2 to 2.05. But if this were some really messy, weird equation that we weren't actually able to calculate it as easily, we could use the derivative of it, which is usually a simpler form of the equation. We would all agree that a quadratic is much more simple than a cubic. We could use the differential equation and say, well, that's easier to calculate, so we can do that. Um, there's actually a class in um, college that you take beyond calculus. You, get, you, get, you take calc 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you take this class called differential equations. Not many people have to take that class. Like, High school math ed majors have to take it. Math major, majors have to take it. Some engineering majors have to take it. Uh, but it's called differential equation. It's basically using the differential equation here with some really weird and funky equations that you can't easily calculate the delta y and delta x with. Okay, It's just one step beyond it saying, okay, how do we use this thing to help us understand really weird, wacky functions? Okay, All right, so let's take a look at this last example. This is more, this is a word problem example here. The radius of a sphere was measured and found to be 21 centimeters with a possible error in measurement of at most 0.05. So what do we, 
what are we introducing here? We're saying, okay, we've got this sphere, and we are pretty confident that we have the, the correct radius of the sphere. We're pretty confident. Now, is it, are we exactly sure? No, because I'm sure it's really hard to find the exact radius of a sphere. But we're pretty confident. How confident are we? We are confident enough to say that that measurement is accurate to within 0.05 of the actual measure. Okay? That measurement is accurate to within 0.05 of the actual measurement. What is the maximum error measurement using this value of the radius to compute the volume of the sphere? So we're saying, okay, if that volume, if that radius is could be off by 0.05, how much would that make our volume be off? And what we can do is calculate the differential on it. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean, uh, we can calculate, like think about this. If I have the volume formula, oh, I don't, I don't green. If I have the volume formula as D, or sorry, not DB, just V. Uh, the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r r cubed. And plug and replug. If I have the volume is four thirds pi r cubed, and I know my radius should be twenty one, with a possible error tolerance, what we can say is that well, if I take the derivative of this, I would say dv is equal to 4 thirds pi r squared, or sorry, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, if I take the derivative of this, remember, pi is just a constant. We would say 4 thirds pi times 3r squared times dr, right? This is kind of like our related rates problems with these word problems. Remember in section 3, 9, okay? Okay, well, if dv is equal to 4 thirds pi r squared dr, I'm going to multiply 4 thirds times 3, and I'm going to get dv is equal to 4 pi r squared, which is actually interesting in and of itself. Does anybody recognize that formula? I recognize that music. Yeah, I was right. I mean, I, they, they took my vote into account. Yeah. That's, the That's actually the surface area of a sphere. So I know this is a little side note here, but if you take the derivative of a volume formula, you get your surface formula, surface area formula for a sphere. Now, that's a little side note, but um, let's keep going with this. Okay, well, we said that if I want to calculate the same differential on the volume as it relates to the, differ the differential on the radius, that's dv. Right? That's dV. That's the differential in the volume. That's how low or high my volume could go. That's the error tolerance within my volume. So dV is what we're looking for. Again, how did I switch to green? Okay. So dV is equal to 4 pi r squared, 4 pi times, what do we think the radius is? 21. Times the error tolerance of our radius. Well, the error tolerance of the radius was 0.05. That's how much we think the radius could be high or low, right? Like 21.05 to 20, or tonight, or excuse me, 21.05 to 20.95. So let's calculate the dv. What am I calculating though? Where did it go? Is there a TI? TI tools, TI smart. That's weird. So unpinned it. Okay, so we have 4 pi times 21 squared times 0.05. Okay, 277 point, what is the maximum error? Okay, 277.1. Two seventy seven point one. Point oh one point one. That's not great ball five. That's run run Rudolph. Come on, <laughs> get your Christmas songs straight. Centimeters cubed. Okay. Now what does that mean? That means 
that my error on my volume, with an error tolerance of 0.05 of my radius, my volume could be off as much as 277.1 centimeters cubed. So that seems like a lot. That seems like a lot, right? To me, that seems like a lot. Here's the deal. What we can actually calculate, I'm, I'm glad we said that. Wow, that seems like a, a good amount. Because what we can actually calculate is what's called the relative error or the percentage error. Okay? The relative error, the percentage error. It doesn't ask us to do this here. But what we can talk about is the relative error. Okay, relative or percentage error. would be the difference, uh, I'm sorry, the, you know, th if you think about um, the, uh, like, any percentage, it's part over whole, right? Part over whole. So the part, the smaller value, is going to be the 4 pi r squared dr. 4 pi r squared dr. And then the bigger value is the actual volume. So uh, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, when we reduce this, my pi's are going to cancel. I would get 4 divided by 4 thirds, which is really 4 times 3 fourths, which when I cancel the fourths, that's just going to end up being 3. So this is 3 dr over r, because again, I, my r's cancel on the bottom. 3 dr over r. So that is basically like saying 3 times 0 0.05, because our error tolerance from this problem was 0 0.05, divided by my radius of 21. So in this problem, I would say 3 times 0 0.05 divided by 21. I am less than 1% off. 0 0.007 and some change. So I am 0.7% off. Now, do we say that that was actually a pretty good value then? Yeah, I would say. When we initially got that number of 207, 277 cubic centimeters, we might say, wow, that's a lot. But relative to what we were working with, that's not. That's, that's actually not a, a big amount. Okay. So that's called relative error, percentage error. You can calculate the percent of the error uh, based on the, the, uh, the ratio to the whole volume of the problem. Well, the, the right. The answer to the problem that they asked was just 277. But it was nice to go through that process to see, like, okay, it wasn't actually that much in the end. Okay. And you can actually do problems where you work backward. You know, maybe you say, okay, I only want a relative error of, like, point, point, 0.1% or something like that. And then you could work backward and say like, okay, in the end, what, how close does my measurement need to be in terms of measuring the radius? How close does my measurement need to be? What's my error tolerance on my radius so that I get a relative error of 0.1% or something like that? It all depends on how close you want this value to actually end up. Okay. All right, I've, I've talked for way too long. I'm so sorry. Okay.